Hello, Marilyn Hall here with another dirndl idea. I was recently given a really cool dirndl for a middle school girl with a cute little ruching along the neckline, a linen bodice, a cute little plaid skirt, and a flowered apron. It didn't come with a blouse though. Today I'm going to make a new blouse for this dress, and I'm going to use a pattern very similar to this one. It simply has lace down the front. I'm not sure yet where, whether I'll put lace on the sleeves or not. I might just do that or might just fold it under just kind of see when it gets there. This is the side front for the blouse. I'm going to cut it on the fold so that this will, when it opens up, it'll be one complete front. Just cutting this out on the fold. After cutting out the front, which is right here, I'm going to do the same thing for the side back. This is placed on the fold, which will give me both halves of the blouse at one time. I'm using one half inch seam allowances here on this pattern. That takes care of the side back. I'm going to cut out both of the sleeves at the same time by having a fold here and I'll cut it right straight. I'm going to do three tucks along the top. I'm going to sew the front of the blouse to the back of the blouse at the shoulder seams. After I finish sewing those two seams, I iron both seams open nice and flat, and then I'll do stay stitching along the neckline all the way around the front, and then I'll clip this little corner here. I'm going to sew each of the shoulder seams now. I'm carefully ironing the shoulder seams open, making sure that they're nice and flat. After the shoulder seams are sewn and ironed open, I'm going all the way around the neckline and stay stitching one half inch in from the ed edges. When I get to any of these corners, like this front corner, I pivot with my needle in, turn the fabric, and stitch again one half inch from that raw edge and do the same thing at the next corner until the whole neckline is stay stitched all the way around. Now that I have all the stay stitching done, you can see this extra fabric here in the front. There's about six inches of ease here that will all be gathered up with elastic. It'll be a really cute little feature. I'm going to snip this little corner into where the stay stitching turns. Being careful not to cut through the stitching because that wouldn't be a good idea. There's one snip. There we go. Two little snips. I have some eyelet that's pretty wide, three and a half inches wide, but I only want to use the very end of it. So I'm going to cut this part that's on the left side off and take just this part for my trim. And I'm going to pin this onto the front of the blouse so that the raw edge of this will go right along the raw edge of the neckline just all the way around this side. I'm not going to do it on this part here. Okay, so I'm going to lay it right here. I'm going to pin it on. Using the print on my eyelet and the stay stitching as a guide, I'm pinning it right along that stay stitching line all the way around the neckline until I get back to this little spot right on the front where the stay stitching ends at the corner. So I started it right here on this corner, with the pin starting right exactly where the stitching ended, and that's where I'll start sewing when I sew this on. I'm sewing the eyelet all along the neck edge. I'm even sewing on the back side and I'll sew just outside of the stitching. When I get right to that bottom corner, I'm going to stop at the stitching and go backwards, which will really help lock that in and keep it from unraveling. This is what it looks like on the back side. This is what it looks like on the front. I'm trimming this extra seam allowance of the neckline, not of the eyelet, just the neckline, down to a one quarter inch. All along the neckline. And I'll wrap the extra seam allowance from the eyelet round to finish off the edge really beautifully. After trimming the seam allowance from the actual blouse front. I'm going to fold this eyelet seam allowance once and twice and pin it towards the inside, which helps that uh, eyelet just to pop up really pretty. And then I'll go to the ironing board. 
after folding under the extra seam allowance and ironing it in place, I'm top stitching it all along the neckline from the front clipped corner all the way to the next front clipped corner and then I'll backtrack to lock it in place. The opening for this blouse front from the beginning corner here to the end corner here is about eight and a half inches wide. I'm going to cut a bias strip of this white fabric about two inches wide and nine and a half inches long so that I can make an elastic casing for this blouse front. I cut it by a strip nine and a half inches long and about an inch and a half wide to make a casing for the elastic on the front of the blouse. This is the front of the blouse where the stay stitching is. I've got this highlight on the sides. Now I'm going to take this blouse and I'm going to place this, this bias tape right across this edge right here. I'm going to pin it in place in two spots. One, two. Now I'm going to fold the whole blouse front down, which is going to make this, which is going to make this side eyelet pop up like this. When this pops up like this, when you fold this all down, this eyelet is going to pop up on top of the blouse front, then have this strip, have this bias strip go right across that eyelet and pin it in place. I'm going to sew it from the back side so I'm not pinning it too precisely. I'll do the same on the other side. This side I accidentally made the eyelet a little bit short, but I'm going to lift this bias strip up, fold this down. This one only has about a quarter inch of a tail on it, but that's okay. A quarter inch is better than none. And then uh, it's like this. Then I'm going to fold the bias tape down, not the bias tape, the bias strip down on there and pin it in place right there. I'm going to flip the whole thing over and I'll be stitching on the back side through all these layers just from that corner to that corner and I'll catch that eyelet in there. Now that I got it um, upside down, I'm going to switch my pins around to the side that I'm sewing on and it'll be a lot easier when it comes to the sewing time. I'm going to put the pins right along the stay stitch line, which I'll be pinning the bias strip to the stay stitching, seam allowance to seam allowance, and also just outside of the uh, stay stitching. There we go. Okay, I'm going to start at this corner. It's a little hard to see when it's all white, but I've got that little diagonal cut here, the eyelet, and the bias strip behind it. I'm going to start right on the corner just outside of the stay stitch. So on this side it looks pretty good. I'm going to flip it down. Sure enough, the eyelet's caught in here. And I'll go to this side and flip it down. And yes, again, the eyelet is caught in there. And I'll iron in this little corner down. Next I'm going to iron this whole edge about a quarter inch under and then I'm going to fold it down all the way across. Now that I've ironed under this raw edge where I fold it down to make the casing for the elastic, I'm going to come underneath here and grade this off so that it's not quite so long. So as I'm removing all this extra little seam allowance that cleans up it, that cleans it up really nicely. Okay, now that this whole elastic casing is all finished, I'm going to fold it down and then top stitch along the bottom edge and then I'll insert the elastic into one of the sides and tighten it up till it's about five and a half inches wide. Right now it's a good eight and a half inches wide. I've sewn on this bias strip. I've sewn under the raw edge and now I'm going to fold it down. I ironed it in place and now I'm going to stitch it 
from the bottom corner here all the way across, which is going to create the casing for the elastic. I'm going to start up about a half an inch and go backwards. Then forward. insert the elastic in. I want the blouse opening to be about five inches when I'm done. Right now it's probably eight and a half inches. So I've got the elastic down in here. I'm going to pull on the little bodkin which pulls on the elastic and gathers it until it is the right width which is about five. And then I'll pin the elastic so that it won't move any farther. Now before I cut it off, because you don't want to do that, if you don't know for sure if you have it how you want. It's a good idea to take the dress that you're going to match it to, or the child, and make sure that it's not too wide of an opening. Sometimes when you have a bra or something on, you don't want your bra to show. So here's the dress that I want to use this with. This opening right now is about five inches, and I think it looks pretty much a right, but I think I'm going to tighten it just a tiny bit more, and I'll call it good. Then I'll sew off the ends of the elastic. For this sleeve, I'm making three generous pleats at the top rather than gathering the sleeve. I'll pin the front corner of the sleeve to the corner of the side seam of the blouse front and pin it up six or eight inches, leaving the pleated portion unpinned. And I'll do the same on the back corner of the sleeve, leaving the pleated portion unpinned. This. Separate these two little sleeves. And then I'm going to start over here. I've got the neckline done, looks pretty cool. I'm going to start over here with the sleeve pinning it um, from the bottom of the front. This is where the side seam will be here, and this is where the sleeve will, so I'm going to pin the sleeve on right here, and I'll put the seam allowance together. So I'm going to match up these two little corners. I'll pin these, and pin it all the way around until I get to where the gathers will start. I started at the side seam and just pinned it straight up, pinned the sleeve straight up to the body. After I finished sewing the sleeves on, I serged the raw edges, and then I pinned up the uh, the whole sleeve edge, lower edge, with the side seam of the uh, bodice, and I'm going to sew it. So I'm going to sew this one half inch seam allowance. I'm sewing all the seams with the half inch seam allowance, and when I'm done, I take them over to my serger and hit those seams one more time so I won't have any fraying. I inserted the elastic into the casing and the blouse is all done. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any requests for more dirndl sewing ideas or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. You can email me at ofeslady at gmail.com.